Oh. Er. Er. I don't know if I want to post this one. 14 karat gold at the bins. What? And, oh my goodness. It's so frustrating. Where's just stop it? Hey, Bella Buddies. Thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. Hey, Bella Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, in this video, we are gonna talk about big money bolos. Items to be on the lookout for, items you can hopefully buy low and sell for a big profit. I'm gonna tell you where they got it, what they paid for it, and what it sold for. So these items come from my Bolo Buddies Facebook group. This is what it looks like. If you're not in my Bolo Buddies Facebook group, there's a link down below. Definitely go join it and anybody can participate in this video. So I dropped this into the post or the share feed and I invite everybody in the group to share their best Bolo. This one just happens to be share your best February Bolo. So everybody puts in the comments their screenshot, where they got it, what they paid for it, and what it sold for, and I bring it to you in video format. So we are gonna get started here with some big money bolos. If you hear me shout out a YouTube channel or an eBay store and pop up their information, that means they are Bolo Buddies members of my YouTube channel, and they have joined level two for perks. So if you're interested in that, awesome. There's more information down below. If not, no worries. It is absolutely free to share a bolo. Okay, let's get started with the first one here. It says, I picked this up at a yard sale for $3. I knew vintage and dealer exclusive advertising items, especially for luxury cars, could be a bolo. I couldn't find any exact comp, so I started it on auction for $72. I felt like I was reaching a bit, but the long run, it paid off. Thank you, Courtney, for your great videos and shout out to Terry at Mindful Recycle. You two ladies who are who have taught me the auction pricing strategy. Yeah. So if I can't find another item that is like the item I'm selling, I recommend auction <laughs> because that way you're going to know for sure. If it's something special, you're going to get a bunch of bids. If it's not something special, then it's probably not going to sell, but price it at what you hope to get for it. That's what I do. Okay. So this is a vintage rare BMW advertising wheel ashtray dealership showroom stock removable hub. And this is what it looks like. So it's an ashtray. Somebody put, I would have walked right past that. Found at the bins in a bag of jewelry. Cost pennies, $1.59 a pound. Sold for $120. Very happy. Awesome review. Wow, it's a 14 karat yellow gold black onyx Asian symbol chain link bracelet. 14 karat gold at the bins. What? That is awesome. Okay, this is what it looks like. All right, the next one. Got this cutie at St. Vincent's de Paul Catholic Charity Thrift Store for $1. It sold overnight for $295 plus shipping. Best sale to date. It is a Disney Store Angel Plush from Lady and the Tramp 2 Best of Show. And it is rare with the uh, with the little tag. And this is what it looks like. So that a dollar into $295. Ah, that is so awesome. All right, this one comes from The Quiet Thrifter. She is a Bolo Buddies member. This is what her eBay store looks like. And check out her store. She has an incredible items. Incredible. She sells a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I bought this 1996 West German Steinbach Nutcracker at an antique store for $40. Listed on eBay for $289 and took a best offer of $200. Buyer paid shipping and it sold in less than a week. There you go. Here is another one that she sold. She said, bought this West German Christian Holzkunst Nutcracker at an antique store for $35 and took a best offer of $139. And the buyer paid shipping on that one. All right, here we go. One of my favorite ways to source, because the price is always right, curbside shopping, aka trash picking. Both of these items were saved from going to a landfill and sold locally for full price on Facebook Marketplace on the same day. $65 into the Jerry Fund. So 
you guys can share a bolo from any platform. It does not have to be eBay, okay? So just make sure you tell me um, in the little post where you sold it at, okay? So this is a Tour Edge Ladies six-way golf bag and a medium birdcage A&E house top with accessories. One sold for 35 and one sold for 30. That is free money sitting on the side of the road. How many of you are sourcing from the side of the road? Let me know in the comments. Somebody put, how do you know when stuff is set out where to go? Do you just drive around? He said, I trash pick in my hometown and I know what days each section gets picked up. It's designated into five zones. Um, so Sunday through Thursday, I have opportunities. Here they don't have special bulk days. Any regular trash pickup day, the township picks up large items. So anytime people set the trash out potentially could yield treasure. It helps that keep people can be wasteful, but often they set unwanted usable items to the side, hoping someone gets them. And I've done that before. You know what I mean? If it's something like I think that somebody could maybe use, I'll sit it out there and I usually donate, but those items will get picked up in our neighborhood as well. There's people that drive around. So I do the same thing. I'll sit it outside of the trash can. Um, if you do that, let me know in the comments. And if you guys see people drive around your neighborhood on trash day, let me know that in the comments because it is common. Uh, let's see, what did he say? As a general rule, I don't go through garbage cans and I almost never open bags. I say almost because sometimes houses get cleaned out and everything's in contractor bags. Rules I set for myself that I never break. Be respectful where I park and never leave a mess behind. Oftentimes, it's home. if homeowners are present, I first ask permission to take an item. And quite often, they will offer more that hadn't been put out yet. Mm, there's a tip. People seem pleased that their items are able to be used by someone. They will, just not usually by me. They will, just not usually by me. Ha ha ha. He's saying like, yeah, I'm going to take them, but they're not going to be for me. I'm going to sell them. My buyer is happy. I'm happy. The original owner is happy. And the item doesn't end up in the landfill. Everyone wins. I love it. So there are some tips for trash picking for you guys. And I wasn't planning on reading that. I just happened to see it. I have, I don't look through these before I do the video. So sometimes I'm like, what does that say? So um, bear with me here. Purchased at the Goodwill for $4, sold for 80 a few weeks after listing. Actually found a total of six of the series with all in of 22 for me. I've sold five of them for a total of $585. Harry Potter Hawthorne Village Collection. And this is what it looks like. And the Hawthorne collection definitely can be a boat. I found this on my first trip to the Goodwill Benz. I went specifically because I heard you talk about them on YouTube. She weighed two pounds, so I paid about $3. Sold seven days after listing in an auction. Oh my goodness. Vintage Vogue Baby Deer 18-inch Eloise Wilkin Designed Doll Top Knot 1960 First Edition. Look at this. I feel like I see these things all the time at the bins. And um, depending on condition, I have picked some up. Some of them sell, some of them sit. But, uh, you know, for the price, it's like, it's almost worth the risk. She sold this for $299.99. Garage sale this summer, purchased for a dollar, sold for $489. Took about six or seven months to sell. Who cares? I always tell that to you guys whenever something takes a while to sell, but it sells like a dollar into $489. Who cares if it took six to seven months? That's nothing. That is a huge profit. Huge. Dollar into 489. My first trip to the bins, I was looking through what others had already pretty much picked through. I saw something that looked like a nice portfolio, but had an odd logo. It looks new. I picked it up and opened it, and there and in it was a little solar charger with the plastic still on the panels. Has a nice mesh zip bag and the cables and components. Paid $1.26 and was asking $84.99 based on comps, but wanted to get it sold. I think I had a coupon on it. I got $67.99. I think a pretty good bolo for my first trip to the bins. Um, and this is what it looks like right here. So Goal Zero Solar Panel Nomad Power Out Options. New without box. So if I'm at the Goodwill bins and I can find items that are new old stock, I definitely always pick them up. Okay, here we go. This is fun. I picked this up at a church flea, a church flea. 
<laughs> he picked it up at a church flea, guys. Last fall for $5. Sorry, Jerry. Got to give you a hard time. And didn't list till mid-January because I had more pressing things going on. Cross-posted it across several platforms, declined two lowball offers, and even asked, don't they sell this at Walmart? I answered that last I checked, Walmart was out of stock on the 2003 model that I had. <laughs> Took about two weeks and it sold on Facebook Marketplace for full price of $60 plus shipping. Yeah, you know, you get those all the time. Like, oh, Walmart has these. Well, then go buy it at Walmart. Like, leave me alone. Like, don't waste my time sending me that. Ah, people like, come on. Anyway, and those are people that probably aren't going to buy your item anyway. You know, they're just kind of giving you a hard time. I know my scratch and sniff stickers. If you guys have not heard about those or seen the video, um, they have sold for crazy money. And I had somebody message me like offers on those for a dollar and a dollar fifty. And they're like, the highest I will go for $2. My kid is just going to scratch these and sniff them or something like that. And I'm like, I don't know if that's exactly what it said, but <laughs> you get the idea. They were telling me my scratch and stiff, sniff vintage stickers that were selling for over $100 are worth a dollar. And I'm just like, stop making me offers. Just stop it. Um, because I would say no, I would decline. And then they'd come back at $1.50. And then they would come back at $2. And I'm like, they're listed for $100. Like, I'm not going to take a dollar. Like, stop it. How many of you have dealt with this? Let me know in the comments. Like, yes, I've dealt with that person. Oh my goodness. It's so frustrating. What do you do? I know some people block. Um, I try not to block people, but sometimes, man, if they just keep going with it, it's like, come on. So I feel like it's just kind of a harassment technique. They're, you know, they know you're not going to take their offer. It's just something for them to do to kind of get under your skin and push your buttons because they think you're selling the item for too much money because it's just stickers. But they're not just stickers. These are stickers that you can't get. Um, I did a lot of heavy research on those and they're selling and I know they're going to be long tail, most of them, because I do have them priced on the higher end because I know their value, but they also take the right buyer. So um, if you did not see this video, definitely go check it out. Spoiler, what I find is uh, scratch and sniff stickers, but it's just incredible. You've got to watch the video. Just unbelievable. Okay, bought for $4 at an online estate sale auction, sold for $102.26. It is a vintage Marlboro Western trench coat with removable lining. And this is what it looks like. So I don't do clothes anymore. So it's always nice to get some clothing bolos in here for those of you that do sell clothing. Everyone knows that Vera Bradley is a bolo. This one comes from Flip It Friends. But think of how surprised I was to find the brand new tote along with several more name brand handbags, clutches, and totes under the table on the last day of a local estate sale for only, get this, $2 each. Not only that, but several had matching clutches inside. I quickly separated out the clutches and listed everything individually. This sold in five days for a total of 55 plus shipping, um, which is about what I spent on the entire sale. So everything I sell after this is pure profit. So Vera Bradley. And again, with Vera Bradley, it's going to range from bread and butter to bigger money items, depending on if it's a discontinued item. Um... If it's a rare print, hard to find print, maybe they come in different shapes, so different styles of bags. All of those things come into play when you have Vera Bradley. Um, but Flip It Friends is a Bolo Buddies member. This is her YouTube channel. Definitely go and check her out and I will link her down below. This one comes from Noni's Treasure House and she is also a Bolo Buddies member. She said, I bought this at a Goodwill for $3.99, sold overnight for $45. It's a sealed board game called Passing the Bar. And her eBay store will be linked down below. If you guys click on the little heart on the eBay stores, that is going to follow the eBay store. And whenever they send out coupons or uh, add new listings, you're going to get notifications. So it's a great way to get alerts. So definitely click on those hearts. I got this Royal Lady Dalton, 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 Catherine signed figurine at a Humane Society thrift store for $12.50. 
My husband pointed out these porcelain figures. I kind of rolled my eyes, but look them up. Comp's pretty good, but it was $25. Yikes. But it was signed, so I thought I'd try. Went to pay. Turned out it was buy one, get one. So went back and grabbed another one. This one sold for $125. By the way, the other one, unsigned, sold for $49. So her hubby did good. And this is what it looks like. That's so funny. We're like all so cheap. It's like $25. You know, and uh, like, wait, we only pay like two dollars or three, so 25 is steep, but buy one, get one free that definitely helped. And it was a bolo for sure. Bought at a thrift store for two dollars and sold for 50 in a week. It's a in, in, and wait a minute, oh, in and out burger golf club cover, and it sold for 50 bucks. A golf cover, how cool is that? Bought at the Goodwill in Michigan, paid $4.99 for it, sold within 48 hours on Mercari, took an offer of $98, was listed for $112. Uh, this one comes from Bolo Buddies member, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce this right, Halen Vintage. This is what her eBay store looks like, and it'll be linked down below, and she is also on Mercari. It is a sash bag, crossbody sling bag, adjustable strap antique teal classic all right the next item this one comes from bolo buddies member dare to dream big 1313 this is her ebay store she said i started sourcing on whatnot and now i'm addicted purchased for a dollar 25 each average cost sold next day on ebay for 20 each i didn't know what they were but nobody else bid on the lot so i got a whole bunch for two dollars shipping was five dollars so um can you source on whatnot? Absolutely. Especially if you can find people who are brand new, just starting out that are willing to start their items really low and there's not a lot of people in the room, you can really get some good deals. But um, definitely try to help those people grow. If there's somebody that you can tag, you know, to bring them in to help, um, you know, get that person some new followers, that's always a nice thing to do, tagging people that you know. Um, but this is great. $1.25 each. Their Quicksilver Surfboard Wax Comb Scraper with Bottle Opener. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. Yeah, $20 each. That's what they look like. Um, if you're not on Whatnot and you would like to join, there is a referral link down below. If you use that referral link to join, you're going to get $15 free money to shop. So take that $15, go buy something on Whatnot, and flip it on whichever flat platform you sell on. So use the $15 to make money. Yes? Yes. All right. So that referral link's down below. Found this um, bin of yarn at the Goodwill for $11.99. Sold within two weeks, all but one bundle left. I still get a, I still get, have a bin. So far, solds are at 102. Don't pass up yarn. Okay, so this is Halen Vintage. Again, sorry, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but she has this big collage of yarn that she sold, and I'm going to pop the picture up here. It looks like one, and these, looks like they've sold on Mercari and eBay. $21 on Mercari plus shipping, $27 plus shipping on Mercari, $25 plus shipping on eBay, seven, I think on eBay, 10 on Mercari and 12 on Mercari and all the Mercari were plus shipping. So yeah, yarn is definitely a great item to pick up. Got it at the Goodwill, was marked 20, but I had a half off coupon, so I paid 10. I don't normally do much clothing unless it is something very unusual. I don't know anything about sports pants. I learned these are used for snowboarding and they are vintage. I used my worth point. Thank you, Courtney, for teaching us about worth point. Oh, you're welcome. Um, if you guys want to learn about worth point, I do have videos on it. It took me a long time to get worth point because it's kind of pricey. But what I ended up realizing once I got it is it makes me money. <laughs> and here's a video I did that proves how it makes me money. And sometimes you have to spend money to make money. And, um, that is one thing that I have learned over the years of reselling is there are resources out there that are going to help me make more money by educating me. And WorthPoint is a great tool. So I do have a referral link down below if you want to check it out.
If not, no worries. Check out the video first because I'm one of those where I want to know how it's going to help me before I'm going to invest my money in it. So I try to share that with you guys. If you type in Bolo Buddies Worth Point, I have a couple videos on it. So she said, I found out they were rare, listed at $99, auction, no bites, charge, change to buy it now, $99, got many lowball offers, sold this morning for $89, best offer. I know these are rare, only had one comp size small, mine was a size large, in excellent condition. Maybe I should have held out for more, but I feel like I utilize my options. Thank you, Courtney, for all you do. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the thank you. Um, so they are grenade, grenade. Yeah, Fatigue Project Snowboard Insulated Cargo Pants. Very cool. Got this from the Salvation Army for $3. At first glance, I thought it was a baby thermometer. Saw the Ultra Pro version was selling on Amazon for $74. Sold in less than a week on eBay for $55 plus shipping. Buy it now at $72 all in. The Womanizer. Or oh. 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 Uh. Oh. Uh. I don't know if I want to post this one. Hmm. It's definitely not a baby thermometer. So we're just going to say that. Um, it is new sealed in the package. So yeah. I'm going to cover up. I'm going to blur it. <laughs> Ultra pro version. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving on. <laughs> We're just going to keep that footage in there and blur it out since I did not disclose what it was. You guys will have to go to the Facebook group and dig if you want to see it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, found this at a garage sale for $1. Wasn't sure what I had. I only knew it was Delft. Turns out these are highly sought after. It's a polychrome Virginia tobacco jar marked Royal. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> She put in parentheses, good luck with that word. I have no clue. You guys know me so well. Okay, Royal Go A Draw Wagon. Royal Go A Draw Wagon. Hey, I might be close. Um, sold for $185.50 with shipping and taxes. I made $126.90 after fees. This is what it looks like, you guys. <laughs> what on earth kind of word is that? You guys love giving me those words. All right. Got this item for 50 cents at an estate sale and listed it for $29.99 plus shipping. And within an hour, I accepted an offer for $25 plus shipping. It is a Sony DAT tape head cleaning cassette cartridge. And this one comes from PNW Flips. She is a Bolo Buddies member and her YouTube channel will be linked down below. Local auctioneer has a Facebook group where he does online auctions. Bought in a lot with other canisters, so cost was approximately $2. It's not a super great bolo, but as a new reseller, I was thrilled. Posted it Tuesday evening at 9 p.m., sold the next morning before 7.30 a.m. for my full asking price of $59.99. It's a rare false groff. I think I say false groff right. Do I? Let me know in the comments. Villa Della Luna Brown Sugar Crock with Sealed Lid, 2004, retired. And this is what it looks like. So sourced it for two bucks online. That's great. I bought this in San Antonio, Texas at the second day of a garage sale for five bucks. I didn't comp it at the sale and I actually regretted buying it until I looked up comps when I got home. Took a few months to sell, but was worth the wait for the right buyer. Sold for $196 free shipping. It is a Resident Evil, the Dark Side Chronicles, Magnum gun and knife with a, a Wii attachments. Rare. Huh. Wonder why he regretted buying it. Maybe because it's big? I don't know. I mean, he paid five bucks for it, so. All right. This one comes from Terry Mindful Recycle. She is a big money bolo finder. If you are not subscribed to her channel, oh my goodness, what are you doing? This is what it looks like. She is a moderator of the Facebook group. So go over to her most recent video, put in the comments, thank you for being a moderator and sub her up, you guys, because um, being a moderator of the Facebook group is crazy. All right. She said, I picked this up at an estate sale. This is the third one I've sold exactly like this that I picked up at different sales and they sell fast. Paid $2, took a best offer of $140. It is the night before Christmas. Uh, Clement, Clement Moore, Tom Patrick, Hallmark, 
pop-up book from 1988. So definitely remember that one. She has found three. All right, you guys, we are going to stop there because we are already 25 minutes in. I got into story time a little bit on that trash pick, but I'm telling you, that was great information. Learn your neighborhood. Learn the neighborhoods around you. When is trash day? Look for those bigger items that are maybe sitting out that you can flip on Facebook Marketplace. I don't do Facebook Marketplace. I have no interest in doing it, but for those of you that do, um, it's definitely like a way to get free stuff. All right, you guys, thanks so much for being here. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite bolo and come share a bolo in the Facebook group. This is what it looks like. And if you if you would like to join memberships at level two to be featured in this video, which means I pop up the screenshot of your eBay store or your YouTube channel and I link it down below, you can join at level two. If you don't see a join button, there is also my link tree down below and a special link that says join Bolo Buddies for perks that you can click on. No pressure to join Bolo Buddies memberships, you guys. It is for you. If you think you will benefit from it, five bucks is a great price to you know get featured. Um, it's once a month and you just go in and you share on this post and you send me your, uh, eBay or your Facebook, you send me your eBay store or your YouTube channel and I feature it. So it's really, really easy. If you click on that join button, there's actually a video that gives you all the information. Um, I also have level three. There's information on that too, if you want to join that. But again, no pressure to join. My channel is completely free. This is just for people that want to join for the perks. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Now we're going to go into some bloopers because I know I have them because I just did them and I was like, that was dumb. I'm just going to like cut that out and then I'm going to put it at the end so everybody can just see how silly I am. Thanks for watching. Leave me something. Comment. Comment below. Thanks for watching. Oh, and subscribe. Want to be a Bolo Buddy? Let's try that again. Bolo Buddies. If you want to be a Bolo Buddies member, come on over to the channel and click on the join button. If you don't see the join button, there is a link down below. This is getting ridiculous. All right, let, let's start over. We're just going to delete that out because that was a little bit that was a little bit dumb. <sighs> I thought it was being funny, but it really wasn't. Okay.